Let's see, I was uh, in, in uh, 76, I was right out of school and I was playing with Pat Martina. And uh, bass player, I think it was Jeff Berlin, we were kind of trying to get a feel on a song. And the bass player said, um, why don't you kind of play like David Garibaldi? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and um, of course I couldn't. So that, that posed a problem. Um, I guess I played the song my own way and it was okay, but that's when I became aware and I started to listen to him. And uh, his stuff always sounded like really pretty impossible to me. It's, and, and what's amazing is that it, it comes so naturally to him. I mean, this is obviously the way that he always heard the, his, his music. But um, you go back and you listen to like some of the Tower records and, and uh, the stuff that is hard to play is really hard to play. But even some of the stuff that's easy to play, when you actually start to analyze it, it there's, a lot, there's a lot more to it. And the thing is that David makes it sound so easy when he does it. Yeah. And so effortless and just flowing along, but actually when you break it down, it's 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 flowing obviously, but it's and effortless, but it's not that easy for someone else just to assimilate. And you know the thing is, it's it's one thing, like even if he did it and you could copy it and and have a reasonable facsimile of it, the fact is is that you wouldn't have been the person that came up with it in the first place, and that's like the real genius of it. You know, we play what is hip, and uh, we play oil in the ground, and we play. Uh, I forget, we've actually, Tower's been on the show, and I guess it was at the time when David wasn't in the band because I played drums with them, it was the horn section, the Tower horn section. And I mean, I just play a very kind of weak uh, imitation of what he does, you know, or like, I don't even actually even try, you know, I make some of the hits and it's because it's impossible. You know, he's defined that stuff so beautifully. Um, and, uh, but it's fun to play, it's challenging to play, and, and you know, sometimes wonder like, if you were given those, that piece of music and there was no drums there, and you just had an, a blank sheet of paper and you put guys down to play, you know, what it would sound like. Because he, it's hard to imagine it another way because he has defined it so much and like, uh, you listen to what is hip and it's like, it's almost like listening to a, to a Beatle record in that you know all the parts, you know, like the drum parts, you know, all the little fills and all the little pieces and all that. Yeah. It's just so well defined. Well, you know, that's a big part of the whole sound is the drum and bass interplay. And, you know, it's like, you know, there was that whole thing in rock music where the drums and bass play together and, you know, bass drum and bass kind of anchored it. But in, the, in this music, the bass player was kind of playing contrapuntal lines, the drummer was playing a lot of sort of linear lines and they would sort of meet in spots, but not all the time. It wasn't like one, but it's very, very tight, even though they're sort of meshing like this as opposed to, you know, completely together. Yeah. And so, the, you know, Rocco is also very, very responsible for the sound of the rhythm section.